welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course sandhi in paninian grammar in this lecture we shall study the technique of pratyahara in relation with the rearrangement of the sound inventory of sanskrit that we studied in the previous lectures so far we have studied the process of speech production described in the paninian grammar the cognitive stage of this process and then the stage of the external expression of it in the form of the audible speech we also studied the features of this audible speech as described in the paniniya shiksha we also then studied the purpose and the principles of arrangement of sounds in the traditional sound inventory also known as matrika patha and we said that the features that we studied they form the basis of sandhi it is important for us to study those features in order to better understand what sandhi is and when a sandhi takes place and in which environment in order to describe the sandhi that happens in the sanskrit language panini has employed the technique of pratyahara and in order to effectively employ this technique of pratyahara panini had to rearrange the traditional sound inventory that we saw earlier in this lecture we shall be focusing on this particular theme namely the technique of pratyahara and rearrangement of the traditional sound inventory this is the sound inventory that we studied in which these are the vowels a e u r u l u a i o a u then there are consonants 25 consonants arranged in five rows and five columns then we have another set of four consonants here all over then we have another set of four consonants sh sh s and h this is in general the traditional sound inventory panini uses pratyahara technique to represent these sounds so that he can use a small word which captures huge number of data so what is a pratyahara pratyahara is a technical term used in the ashtadhyayi to denote a set of sounds undergoing certain grammatical operation and this can be done in a concise manner by using the pratyahara technique panini uses 41 such terms in his ashtadhyayi and in the entire paninian grammar so here are the examples of what pratyahara zar ach is a technical term h is a technical term jhal jash jash ik yan all these are the technical terms denoting sets of sounds different sets of sounds this small term ach which means all vowels is capable of representing the entire set of vowels so panini uses this term in order to describe the sandhi either as a substantive end or as an environment a left hand side environment or the right hand side environment 
Similarly, all these other terms also. It is important for us to study how these terms get formed. So they are formed by picking up a final sound which is termed as it and then placing it in front of us and then selecting any sound previous to it and placing it before the it and joining both together this makes a pratyahara. This is how a pratyahara is formed by picking up a final sound which is termed it and then placing it in front of us then selecting any sound which comes previous to it and placing it before this it and joining both together makes the pratyahara. This is how ach is formed. Ch is an it and then a comes before it maybe at some distance and then both these are joined together and the term ach gets formed. This is a pratyahara. This is how the terms are formed. So what is the sutra which describes this particular procedure in the Ashtadhyayi and it is 1171 which is Adirantena Saheta and this sutra contains four words Adihi, Antena, Saha and Ita. Adihi means a beginning sound, Antena means with the final, Saha means together with and Ita means with it. What this sutra means is that together with this it which is final the beginning sound makes a pratyahara makes the term pratyahara as we saw in ach, h etc. So the next question is what is an it? And the answer is that it is a marker which has a purely metalinguistic function and it is not part of the object language. It is not used by speakers of Sanskrit. What is the meaning of it? It literally means one who goes away. So which is there as far as metalinguistic description is concerned. But when the object language element is derived, the metalinguistic element is removed. However, it is cleverly used to describe certain processes, certain formations. And that is the reason why it is primarily called one who goes away, it. So what is an it and how is it described? This technical term it is described in the Ashtadhyayi from 132 up to 138. We will discuss only one sutra out of this section which is 133 which is relevant for us in order to study how the pratyaharas get formed. That sutra is Halantyam. The word it is continued from the previous sutra and the two words in the sutra are hal and antyam. Hal is a consonant, antyam is final. What this sutra means is that in the meta language, a final consonant is termed it. Any final consonant is termed it. What does this presuppose? The description of the technique of pratyahara Adirantena Saheta and the term it, Halantyam. What does all this presuppose? It presupposes an existing set of sounds which we saw in the form of the traditional sound inventory but arranged in such a manner where at the end of each subset will appear a consonant. So it is not exactly the traditional sound inventory that we saw earlier that this technique of pratyahara presupposes. 
it presupposes an arrangement in such a manner where at the end of each subset will appear a consonant which can be termed it which can be then used to formulate the technical terms called pratyahara to denote the set of sounds undergoing a particular grammatical operation this is what the technique of pratyahara presupposes and so we see that that traditional sound inventory that we saw earlier gets rearranged in this particular way these are the 14 sutras in which all that we saw earlier is rearranged and i'll read these 14 sutras for you all they are ayun ruluk eong ay auch hayavarat lan yamangananam jhabhai ghadadash jabagadadash khapachatat chatatav kapai shakshasar hal these are those 14 sutras these are called pratyahara sutras why because these are used to form the technique of pratyaharas these are also called as varna sutra because they enumerate the basic sound the other name is chaturdasha sutra the 14 sutras they are also called shiva sutras as these are considered to have been conceived from the inspiration of god shiva and we have a very famous verse described in the nandikeshwara kashika which says nrattavasane nataraj rajo nanada dhakkam navapanchavaram uddhartu kamas sanakadi siddhan etad vimarshe shiva sutra jalam the word shiva sutra appears in this verse then similarly these 14 sutras are also called maheshwara sutra or maheshwara sutra as these were conceived from the inspiration of god shiva also known as maheshwara now we restate the 14 sutras but on this slide we mark the final consonants in red ink that appear at the end of each and every sutra so for example an in the first k n ch t n m y sh sh w y r and l these are the 14 consonants coming at the end of the 14 sutras now the sutra 133 said that all these 14 which come at the end of these subsets 14 sutras they are marked as it so all these 14 will be marked as it by 133 then we can pick up any one of them and place it somewhere say for example we pick ch and then we pick any sound that comes before this ch so we pick a and then we place a and ch next to each other and we join them together and we get the form ach we get the word ach this is a technical term ach what does this stand for this stands for all the elements that come in between a and ch and also a so all these vowels they are part of ach one important thing to note here is that the markers the its in between they are not part of this pratyahara ach they are not denoted by the pratyahara ach this is how these pratyaharas will get formed and we shall see now if we compare these 14 sutras with the traditional sound inventory we shall notice the following things let us look at the description of the sutras and their correspondence with the traditional sound inventory so let us look at the first four sutras ayun ruluk eong and ai auch 
these four sutras consist of vowels arranged in accordance with their places of articulation in the traditional sound inventory in the topmost row. Then when we go to sutras 5 and 6, we note that these sutras are Hayavarat and Lan and we note that these two sutras consist of semi-vowels and H. Y, V, R, L and also H. These are mentioned in the two top, two bottom lines in the traditional sound inventory. Then if we go to Sutra 7, which is Yamanganannam, this sutra consists of nasal consonants, which are part of the different classes arranged in rows and columns. These represent different places of articulation. These sounds form the fifth column representing the effort of articulation. So, Y belongs to the Ch class which is classified in accordance with the place of articulation and this Y, M, N, 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 if you look at them, they are all forming the fifth column in the traditional sound inventory. Then we go to Sutras 8 and 9. Jabhai and Ghadadhash and we note that these two sutras consist of fourth of the class consonants from each of the class which represents the place of articulation and these sounds form the fourth column representing the effort of articulation which we have already studied. Now we go to the description of sutra 10 which is Jabhagadadhash. This sutra consists of the third of the class consonants from each of the class representing the place of articulation and these sounds form the third column based on the effort of articulation. Sutras 11 and 12 which are Kapha Chathath, Chathav and Kapai. In the sutra 11 we note that Kapha Chathath are mentioned in green ink primarily to distinguish them from the rest five sounds. These two sutras consist of the second and the first of the class consonants from each class. These sounds represent the second and first column representing the effort of articulation. Kapha Chathath Chathatav and Kapai. Then if we go to sutras 13 and 14, Shakshasar and Hal, we note that these two sutras consist of the sibilant sounds, Shakshasa and Ha. So this is how the 14 sutras can be described in correspondence with the traditional sound inventory. Clearly, the traditional sound inventory is rearranged in a particular manner in which there are some differences also, like H appearing twice. The order in which the semi-vowels are placed is different. In the traditional sound inventory, they are mentioned as Y, R, L, V. In these 14 sutras, they are mentioned as Y, V, R, L. So how to form the Pratyahara using these 14 sutras? By picking up a final sound which is termed as it and placing it, then selecting any sound previous to it and placing it before the it sound and joining both of them together and this makes a pratyahara. So for example, we select ch which comes at the end of sutra number 4 and we place it somewhere, then we select a which comes in the first sutra and place it before ch and join both, so we get ach. Ach is a technical term in which ch is it, ch is a marker. What does ach mean? It means one, all the sounds that come in between a and ch as well as a. This is in accordance with 1171 that we studied in this lecture earlier. It is important to note that this list of sounds 
does not include the markers or it sounds that come at the end of the first, second and third sutra. This is not explicitly stated anywhere in the Ashtadhyayi, but this is what is understood in the system and is stated by the later commentators who have commented on the text of Ashtadhyayi, which is generally known as the later Paninian grammatical tradition. So, ach stands for a, e, u, ru, lu, a, o, i and o, which means all vowels put together. How will it be used if it is observed that any vowel or all vowels are part of a particular grammatical operation and this operation is to be described, Panini will now use the pratyahara ach and depending on the side of environment or being a substitute or substituent, case will be added to the word ach. This is how ach will be used in the description of a particular process, grammatical operation. And this will be very effectively used as far as the sandhi description is concerned which we shall study in this particular course. So in this course, we will keep confronting with this term ach. When we use the term ach, when we see the term ach, we should know that ach stands for a pratyahara, which means all vowels. Let us take the second example. How to form the pratyahara? By picking up a final sound which is termed it and placing it somewhere and then selecting any sound which is previous to this it and placing it before this it and then joining both together that will make a pratyahara. So as a second example let us select l which comes at the end of the 14th and the final sutra in the pratyahara sutras and place it somewhere and then select her which comes in the fifth sutra obviously before this la and place it before la and then join both of them together and so we get the term hal in which la is a marker. What does hal mean? Hal means all the sounds that come in between her and la. They are called hal. This is in accordance with 1171 Adirantena Saheta. This list of sounds does not include the markers it that come at the end of sutras from 5 to 13. This is not explicitly stated anywhere in the Ashtadhyayi but is stated by the Paninian grammatical tradition. Also an important thing to note over here is that this list does not include the recurrence of vowel a which gets mentioned with each consonant. The mention of a along with each consonant is for the sake of clear comprehension of consonants. So for example, hal stands for he, ye, wa, r and this means only consonant he, only consonant ye, only consonant wa and only r and not a which is attached to it. This a uh is attached to it only for the sake of clear comprehension. Otherwise it won't be possible for us to comprehend all the consonant distinctly. So hal stands for ha ya vara la yamangana na jabha ghada dha jabagada dha kapha chathata chathata kapha shashasa and ha. So in all this pratyahara hal stands for all consonants. And how will this be used? When observed that any consonant or all consonants are part of a particular grammatical operation which is to be described, Panini will use the pratyahara hal. And depending upon the side of environment or being a substitute or substituent, case will be added to hal. And so 
the pratyahara hal will be used to denote all the consonants. We will also meet this term hal when we describe sandhi. Similarly, let us take another example in forming the pratyahara. So, how do we form the pratyahara? Once again, by picking up a final sound which is termed it and placing it somewhere, then selecting any sound previous to it and placing it before this it sound and joining both of them together and that will make a pratyahara. So we select la once again which comes at the end of the 14th sutra and place it in front of us. Then instead of selecting ha which we did last time, we select a which comes in the first sutra and place it before la. And then we join both a and la together and we get the term al, al in which la is a marker. So how will al be used if it is observed that any sound is part of a particular grammatical operation and it is to be described, Panini will use the Pratyahara Al. Now Pratyahara Al stands for all the sounds that come in between the first and the last sound. Eventually it means all sounds or any sound together with A which comes in the beginning. So, Panini will use the Pratyahara Al in order to describe any sound which is part of a grammatical operation. And depending upon the side of environment or being a substitute or the substituend, case will be added to Al. This term will also keep coming to us when we study Sandhi. In fact, we will describe Sandhi as purely an Alvidhi, which we shall do later on. Now let us take a look at some important pratyaharas. It is important to note here that pratyaharas is a very important technique which allows Panini to describe the process of Sandhi in a very brief manner. Now let us see some of the important pratyaharas and what they stand for. So here are the pratyaharas H which stands for A, O, I and AU. These are part of the sutras 3 and 4. Similarly we have Jhal, a very important pratyahara used in the Ashtadhyayi. So Jhal stands for Jabha, Ghadadha, Jabagadadha, Kapa Chathata Chathata, Kapa Shashasa and Ha. So sounds mentioned in Sutra 8 to 14 are covered by this Pratyahara Jhal. This Pratyahara involves sounds stated in column 4, 3, 2, 1 in the traditional sound inventory plus Shashasa and Ha. Then we have Jhash with Jabha Ghadadha Jabagadadha, part of it. These are mentioned in Sutras 8 and 9 in the Pratyahara Sutras and they correspond with columns 4 and 3 in the traditional sound inventory. Then we have the Pratyahara Jash, which covers the sounds Jabagadadha. They are mentioned in Sutra 9 in the Pratyahara Sutra and this corresponds with column 3 of the traditional sound inventory. Then we have a very important Pratyahara An which stands for A, E and U only. There is only one instance in 1169 where it stands for all vowels plus all semi vowels plus her. So only in 1169 the Pratyahara An is formed with the marker Na that comes in the 6th Sutra Lan. Otherwise 
wherever the pratyahara an is used in the ashtadhyayi this pratyahara is formed always with the na marker na coming in the first sutra this is not explicitly stated in the ashtadhyayi but once again the paninian grammatical tradition does tell us explicitly about this then we have the pratyahara at at stands for all vowels plus semi vowels minus l plus h h is not a semi vowel that's why it's stated it is stated separately at stands for all vowels plus semi vowels minus l that means y r and w y r l w are the semi vowels minus l means y r and w then we go to um um stands for all vowels plus all semi vowels plus h plus all the consonant 5 class 5 consonants yamangana n then we go to the pratyahara ash which stands for all vowels plus all the semi vowels plus h plus consonants 5 4 and 3 in the traditional sound inventory then we go to h h stands for all vowels minus a excluding the first vowel a then we go to the pratyahara in in stands for once again all vowels minus a plus all the semi vowels and h this pratyahara in is always formed with the marker na which appears in the 6th sutra and never with the marker na in the 1st sutra once again this is explicitly stated by the paninian grammatical tradition then we have hash which stands for all semi vowels plus h plus consonants 5 4 and 3 so hash can be also described in terms of ash minus ach then we have yar which denotes all consonants minus h similarly yai denotes all consonants minus sh sh s and h then we have yam which denotes semi vowels plus column 5 of the consonants in the traditional sound inventory all the nasals then we have val val stands for all consonants minus y then we have ral which stands for all consonants minus y and w then we have jhar having class consonants 4 3 2 and 1 plus sh sh and s then we have jhai having class consonants 4 3 2 and 1 then we have jhash only class only column 4 of the class consonants then we have khar having columns 2 and 1 plus sh sh and s then we have khai columns 2 and 1 then we have char column 1 plus sh sh and s then we have shar with only sh sh and s and finally shall with sh sh s and h while describing the contents of these pratyaharas we have stuck to the notation of the sounds that are found in the pratyahara sutras what we mean is that although the consonants are not shown as consonants 
like this l or r etc these consonants are shown together with the vowel with an understanding that this vowel is there only for the sake of pronunciation clear comprehension this does match with the way in which the sounds are mentioned in the pratyahara sutras so please be very sure about this this is how the pratyaharas are used and these pratyaharas allow panini to describe any operation with respect to these sounds in as brief a manner as possible to summarize use of pratyaharas enables the paninian grammar to refer to the set of sounds in as brief a manner as possible use of pratyaharas makes the formation of the sandhi rules shorter in size and exhaustive in scope several sandhis their environments their substituents are described in the paninian grammar by using the technique of pratyaharas thank you very much